If you ever wondered how life thrives when untouched by modern technology, a lifestyle amidst thick canopy of trees in the green heart of the Amazon, then join me as we investigate the extraordinary life of the Huitoto tribe, the guardians of the majestic Amazon jungle. Enslaved by rubber barons in the early 20th century, the Huitoto people endured immense suffering across the Amazon. Originally located in southeastern Colombia and northern Peru, their population drastically declined from over 50,000 to around 1,000 due to diseases, forced migration, and extreme violence. The most devastating blow came during the rubber boom, when figures like Julio Cesar Arana exploited indigenous labor through debt bondage and physical abuse, leading to a decline of indigenous populations by more than half. Today, Huitoto groups, totaling around 8,500 members, strive to preserve their cultural heritage. While roughly half still speak the Huitoto language, survivors have dispersed to marginal interfluvial areas. Some have reclaimed their traditional homelands, while others have assimilated into different regions, losing their ethnic identity in the process. This indigenous tribe of the Amazon is widely renowned for its rich traditions and profound knowledge of the natural world. Their ancestral homeland spans southeastern Colombia and northern Peru, where their existence is deeply intertwined with the dense jungle surroundings. The Huitoto people, numbering several thousand in their prime, belong to an isolated language group with over 31 distinct tribes. Among these, the largest are the Murui, inhabiting the western reaches of their historical territory. Across the land, another significant group, the Muinan, once thrived to the east of the Murui, but gradually merged into their larger counterpart. The Menaka, residing along the Putumayo and Ampiaku river basins, form another vital segment of the Huitoto population, alongside several smaller groups. The differences in dialects between the Murui and Muinane, the primary subgroups of the Huitoto proper, reflect the depth of their cultural heritage. Nearby tribes such as the Bora, numbering 1,640 individuals, and the Miranya, with a population of just 300, share linguistic similarities with the Huitoto, and they reside along the Cahuinari and Igara Parana rivers, respectively. Additionally, the Andoke, totaling 250 members, predominantly occupy the banks of the Caqueta, further contributing to the mosaic of Huitotoan languages spoken across the region. For the Huitoto, survival is rooted in a subsistence economy centered on hunting and a unique form of agriculture called Sweden farming. This traditional method involves burning plant, remains to enrich the soil, sustaining their communities for generations. The Huitoto are known to feast on wild plants, fruits and games, with fruits like the Caimito holding a special place in their culinary traditions. From its milky flesh to its nutritious seeds, every part of the Caimito is cherished. To ward off the sticky effects of its milky substance, locals ingeniously use cocoa butter or pork fat on their lips and hands. Beyond mere sustenance, the Caimito serves as a source of healing, with its leaves steeped to create a disinfectant. Hunting is a vital part of the Huidoto people's life, but it is done with great care and reverence. Before setting out on their hunts, the hunters engage in rituals, seeking permission from the forest spirits and seeking success in their endeavors. Possessing deep-rooted knowledge of the land, the Huitoto exhibit exceptional hunting skills. However, they adhere to a principle of sustainability, never taking more than what is necessary, and understanding the vital role each animal plays in the delicate ecosystem balance. Men of the tribe utilize shotguns and blowguns with poisoned darts for smaller games. They employ various traps and pitfalls, having once used spears but never used the bow and arrow. They also bring home such games as peccaries, tapir, capybaras, agoutis, anteaters, armadillos, deer, sloths, parrots, frogs, and turtles. But the most important game is monkeys. Fish are captured using nets, spears, and poison with the adoption of fish hooks in recent times. Yet, life for the Huitoto isn't solely about survival. It's about connection. They honor their ancestors through sacred rituals, paying homage to the spirits that dwell in the trees and waters that surround them. Their history hasn't been without struggle. Following exploitation and decline, the tribe secured a land grant from the Colombian government in the late 1980s establishing a reserve that serves to safeguard them from encroachment by colonizers. 
Despite their traditional ways, the Huitoto people are open to change, as well as hospitable. Introduced to Catholicism by Spanish missionaries in the 1930s, they embraced the faith, and to this day, the tribe predominantly follows Roman Catholicism. Both boys and girls have access to education through the Catholic school, and their acquired skills in crafting sieves, hammocks, canoes, and woven baskets provide not only sustenance, but also income, sustaining their community in the modern world. The Huitoto groups share similar subsistence practices, characterized by periodic movements to establish new Swidden gardens. Their diet centers around sweet and bitter manioc, cultivated in over 20 varieties, along with an array of complementary crops such as pineapples, fruit trees, and minor annuals. They plant a wide variety of other crops, including plantains, bananas, yams, papayas, sweet potatoes, mangoes, peach palms, and various palms, among others. Men clear the fields while women sow the seeds, creating a patchwork of fields that ensure a variety of crops for their families. Even after the fields are fallow, they continue to provide fruits from planted trees. A typical family maintains multiple fields of varied ages and crop mixes, ensuring a constant supply of diverse produce, and fields are typically left fallow for 10 to 20 years before reuse. At the heart of the Huitoto family social and ceremonial life stands the communal house, an octagonal structure with a conical roof, often oriented eastward. Surrounding the communal house are outbuildings and smaller dwellings, forming a complex dominated by this central structure. These communal houses reflect the murui, which is the masculine type with closed roofs, or muinane, the feminine type with an opening at the apex of the roof. Architectural styles, symbolizing complementary aspects of existence. Within households that are politically and ceremonially prominent, there is a xylophone made of hollow logs of various sizes, suspended from a wooden frame that produces different notes when they are beaten to announce a ceremony or the arrival of an esteemed guest. Certain individuals are specialists in building and playing these instruments. While others specialize in the production and use of tobacco or coca, and in various ritual practices, dances, and songs. In their maloca, that is an ancestral longhouse used by these indigenous people of the Amazon, men have a designated area for consuming mambe, an ancestral green powder made from coca leaves and other plant ashes. Mam serves as a direct link to the spiritual realm and features prominently in rites of passage, marriages, and funerals. In earlier times before telecommunication towers and cell phones, Mam facilitated community connection. Elders would gather in a circle, accompanied by chants for the well-being of their community, the forest's fauna, and Mother Nature. When Huitoto men partake in Mambe, they accompany the ritual with the beat of maguare drums, echoing across kilometers to communicate with neighboring tribes. The social organization of the Huitoto is rooted in patrilineal descent, where lineage is traced through the paternal side of the family. Minimal patrilineages cohabit in patrilocal residential units, with women joining from other groups according to local exogamous customs. They reside in communal houses known as Joforomo or Maloka, which are shared by several families. Crafted from woven palm leaves and sturdy branches, these homes seamlessly blend into the vibrant forest backdrop. Each family occupies its own space within the communal dwelling, yet they remain interconnected, fostering a sense of unity and belonging. Hammocks, the primary beds made of canvas or rope mesh suspended from supports, provide individual sleeping areas for each family. These units collectively form a village, typically centered around a single multi-family dwelling, though some areas may have several large communal houses. Each village operates as an independent, patrilocal, and exogamous community, with populations ranging from as few as 25 individuals in certain subgroups to up to 500 in others. Village territories span from 80 to 1,600 square kilometers, and the authority of the village headman is limited to its boundaries, except during large-scale emergencies, such as conflicts with outsiders. This leadership position is often inherited from a father or brother, subject to the approval of the Council of Elders. In times of crisis, villages may come together under the guidance of a chief who leads a federation of villages, 
While the Huitoto society has a rich cultural heritage, it's also marked by historical conflicts and rituals. Warfare between groups was once common, often involving the taking of prisoners. Young captives were integrated into the community, while older captives were ritually consumed during ceremonies. Cannibalism, a magico-religious practice, was limited to male participation and carried out as part of specific rituals. Despite these historical complexities, present-day Huitoto society retains elements of hierarchy and division. Lineages and groups are associated with specific colors, animals, or plants, with some being considered dominant, while others are subordinate or commoners and members are tasked with caring for their totem, thereby nurturing the overall environment. This hierarchy extends to daily tasks and living arrangements, with commoners occupying lower social status, often assigned laborious chores, and typically residing in smaller houses outside the central communal dwelling. Birth order plays a significant role in defining hierarchy among lineages and groups of brothers, with the eldest typically assuming the position of hereditary headman, or owner of the house. Traditionally, the Huitoto people adorned themselves with minimal clothing. Men fashioned breech clouts from bark cloth, while women adorned their bodies with paint and flecks of cotton. Ceremonial attire varied based on occasion and status, with individuals showcasing their rank through plumage, jaguar tooth necklaces, and ceremonial axes for chiefs. Today, however, you'll find many Huitoto individuals dressed in Western-style clothing a reflection of the modern influences that have reached even the depths of the rainforest. For the Huitoto, their yearly rhythms are intertwined with a tapestry of rituals and ceremonies, each intricately connected to their environment and community. These rituals serve to foster growth, ensure bountiful harvests, and protect against sickness and death. Take, for instance, the dance of the Chontaduro held in December, where up to a hundred people gather to forge alliances, exchange knowledge, and pray for plentiful fishing and harvests. While Christianity has gained traction among the Huitoto, a significant portion still adheres to their traditional tribal religion, particularly their reverence for the shaman. Shamans act as bridges between the human and spirit worlds, conducting rituals to seek guidance and protection from forest spirits. They also play a vital role in teaching their people about the proper use of plants and animals, ensuring harmony with nature. However, when deaths occur, often attributed to supernatural causes, shamans may face scrutiny, typically from other groups. As the sun dips below the canopy, the Huitoto people gather around fires, sharing ancestral stories and wisdom. For them, life transcends mere existence. It's about harmonizing with the earth and preserving the Amazon's wonders for future generations. But this way of life hasn't been without challenges. In the 1990s, the advance of civilization threatened their culture and livelihood. Deforestation, soil depletion, and river pollution due to cattle raising and commercial agriculture encroached upon their ancestral lands. Yet, some Huitoto organized to reaffirm their cultural identity and reclaim traditional territories. In the modern age, technology has brought new connections and opportunities. Shortwave radios facilitated communication between one tribe and the next. The Huitoto have embraced these changes, blending tradition with modernity to navigate their path forward while safeguarding their heritage. Amidst daunting challenges like deforestation creeping in and outside pressures looming, the Huitoto stand firm in their vow to safeguard their homeland. They're the Amazon's protectors, entrusted with preserving this invaluable terrain for future generations to come. As you explore this rich history together, remember to hit the like button on this video if you found it informative, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our next adventure.